Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Friday, May 7th. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you for choosing to be here to get filled in on what's happening here in Northeast Ohio. We start with a very serious allegation out of Lorain County. A volunteer coach has been arrested, charged with allegedly raping a student. Jason Allen DiMaccia, who has been a volunteer coach at Lake Ridge Academy, is facing three felony counts of sexual battery. North Ridgeville police say they were notified of these alleged incidents on May 3rd that date back to December of 2020. Recently, a student notified a teacher at the school who then notified school administration who then contacted the police. Today, the head of Lake Ridge Academy, Mitch White, said that the school is fully cooperating with authorities and will continue to do so, and that the students' health, safety, and welfare are top priorities at Lake Ridge Academy. They said their focus is with the students right now. A preliminary hearing for Demacia has been scheduled for May 12th. That'll be at 2 p.m. in Elyria Municipal Court. Also here in Ohio, the Republican Party is calling for the resignation of Representative Anthony Gonzalez after he voted to impeach former President Donald Trump. The Ohio Republican Party's Central Committee voted to censure Rep. Gonzalez of Cleveland and nine other Republican congressional members who voted in February to impeach the former president. And additionally, the Ohio GOP is calling, as I said, for Gonzalez to resign. Now, this is a move that we've seen across the country. Overall, by and large, not been successful. Gonzalez has also stood by his decision in favor of voting for the impeachment of the president, Trump, at that time. Here's what he said. The president of the United States helped organize and incite a mob that attacked the United States Congress in an attempt to prevent us from completing our solemn duties as prescribed by the Constitution. What Representative Gonzalez is referencing there is the certification of the Electoral College votes that would confirm our current president, Joe Biden, as president. He went on to say, in doing so, five people have died, including a Capitol Police officer. Many more have been injured and our democracy has been shaken. He then said, when I consider the full scope of events leading up to January 6th, that's the day of the insurrection in Washington, D.C., including the president's lack of response at the United States Capitol as it was under attack, he is compelled to support impeachment. Now, as a reminder, Trump was acquitted of inciting an insurrection in the Senate. He is the only U.S. president and the only federal official to be impeached twice. Here in Cleveland, we have now learned that current mayor Frank Jackson will not be seeking an unprecedented fifth term as mayor. Now, less than 24 hours after he made that announcement yesterday, he sat down with our own Russ Mitchell for a one-on-one -on -one conversation about what's next for him and what it was like to make that decision. Mayor Jackson said that it wasn't a difficult decision, and to be honest, it was more difficult deciding to run again last time because last time he was even thinking about not running. He said, as a reminder, he never actually wanted to be mayor and what he's most looking forward to is doing nothing he says what he will miss the least is bs and managing drama russ asked him what he was most proud of and he said that he doesn't think that way here's a quote from him this is a great line i'm not here to write an obituary so to speak he said he still has work to do and he's still going to do work and he's just not in that mindset because once you start thinking about what your legacy is going to be you're not in a working frame of mind now, as we look forward to who will be the next mayor of Cleveland, here are the people who have formally confirmed they will be running. Kevin Kelly, current Cleveland City Council president. Zach Reed, former Cleveland City Council member. Bashir Jones, current Cleveland City Council member. Sandra Williams, currently a state senator. And Justin Bibb, a nonprofit executive. Of course, we'll be following this race very closely as we look to that election, which is coming in the fall. Now, there's a special report coming over the next several days. It's called Bomb City USA, and it's from our investigative reporter, Rachel Polanski, and producer, Phil Trexler. This is the untold story of Cleveland's mobster dynasty. And in this first installment, Rachel Polanski has the first ever interview with the FBI agent who identified Danny Green's body. Now, a little history lesson here. It was an October day in 1977 when Danny Green had just gotten done with a dentist appointment usually very careful that day he was caught by surprise and a bomb in a car went off taking his life now that car was registered to keith ritson who was a known associate of danny green well when the young fbi agent bob frederick got on the scene he went to go look at the body pulled the sheet back 
of the body that was on a stretcher and he said that's not Keith Ritson that's Danny Green so he was the first person to identify that it actually was Danny Green who was lost in that explosion lots more incredible details coming from Rachel Polanski you can check out that full story out on WKYC.com of course that'll be airing over the next several days on all of our TV stations and you'll see it on our social platforms and our website and our YouTube page as well now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers. These first numbers come from Johns Hopkins University. Around the world, there have been 156,272,647 reported cases of COVID. Here in the U.S., 32,620,952 cases. That's 20.9% of the global cases, down a tenth of a percentage point again there. Looking at the number of deaths globally, that number is at 3,259,924 here in the U.S. 17.8% of those deaths, 580,288. Now that number is also down another tenth of a percentage point from yesterday. Let's look at the Ohio picture. From the Ohio Department of Health, we've seen 1,397 new cases of COVID reported in the last day. That is up ever so slightly from yesterday. We do know that there have now been 84 more reported deaths since we last got numbers from the Ohio Department of Health on Tuesday. What that means is those confirmed reports have come in on death certificates to the Ohio Department of Health. That doesn't mean that those deaths occurred in the last three days. We've seen 83 new hospitalizations related to COVID in the last 24 hours, and 1,056 people are currently in the hospital. Both of those numbers are down. but. Of the people in the hospital, 315 are being treated in the ICU. That number is up with seven new ICU admissions in the last day. That number is down. Taking a look at the vaccinations, close to 35% of Ohioans are now completely vaccinated with either one Johnson & Johnson shot or two shots of Pfizer or two shots of the Moderna vaccines. That's more than 4 million Ohioans and close to 55,000 people in the last day. More than 41% of Ohioans have started the process, that's more than 4.8 million Ohioans and close to 20,000 people getting their first COVID-19 vaccine shot in the last day. Again, these numbers we are seeing definitely creep down as the U.S. moves towards a goal of hopefully getting 70% of Americans vaccinated by July 4th. Now let's take a look at the Major League Baseball pitcher. Now, right now, the Tribe is in first place in the American League Central Division. Yes, it's early, but hey, it's better than not being in first place, even when it's early. And people are talking about where Albert Pujols is going to go. Now, he was just released by the Los Angeles Angels yesterday. A lot of people speculating that he might return to the St. Louis Cardinals, where he spent the first 11 years of his career. But at least one person from MLB Network Radio, former Major League Baseball first baseman and ESPN analyst Eduardo Perez thinks that Cleveland is the landing spot for 41-year-old Pujols. Now, here's why he thinks that makes sense. He thinks that it's an upgrade to Jake Bowers and Yu Chang, and at the same time, it's going to be a competitive division and it's going to stay competitive. And he mentioned that the Tribe is currently in first place. And the record is 17 and 13 as the tribe looks towards taking on the Cincinnati Reds this weekend. He says all of that is despite Bowers and Chang, who have not necessarily established themselves as reliable everyday players. Now, Pujols' batting average is higher than both Bowers and Chang's. He's hit more home runs and RBI, RBIs excuse me, so far this year than both of the players combined. And we know that salary is a concern for our Cleveland baseball team. Right now, they're at $54 million, according to Perez. Now, if you add Pujols to that, you only have to pay the prorated veteran minimum salary. So that's not going to change the payroll structure here in Cleveland. He's an older player, and Tito Francona has experience with older players. So this is the compelling case being made for Pujols potentially landing here in Cleveland. I guess we will just have to wait and see what happens there. Another thing we're going to have to wait and see about the question is Cedar Point going to remove the Wicked Twister roller coaster? Now, there's been speculation about this for years, and Cedar Point's Tony Clark tweeted this week adding more fuel to that fire. He tweeted on May 2nd a video of the Wicked Twister, and it was sort of kind of suggestive messaging. He said, weekends are wicked. They all have to end sometime. Make the best of it. And it was a video of the Wicked Twister being tested. And then on May 5th, 
he tweeted a photo of the exit sign of the Wicked Twister, and he said, my day is now done, but I return tomorrow for more fun and games. Well, our 3 News team checked in with Tony Clark and asked him what's going on there, and he said, you know, I just saw them testing Wicked Twister, just having some fun with it. And so then he was pressed again, and we asked him, so does that mean the Wicked Twister is staying? And he said... Cedar Point doesn't comment on speculation, so I guess we will just have to wait and see there, too. Another thing you'll have to wait for, but not too long, is to see Nine Inch Nails coming to the Nautica Pavilion here in the Flats. This will be the first time since they were inducted to the Rock Hall in 2020 that they will take the stage in Northeast Ohio for two shows at Jacobs Pavilion at the Nautica. That'll be on September 21st and September 23rd, taking a day off there in between. Pixies will be the opening act on both shows. Tickets go on sale 10 a.m. next Friday, May 14th. And some great news for University Circle here. You know, a panel of experts from USA Today and 10 Best chose University Circle as one of the top 20 art districts in the country. And University Circle has been named the best art district in the U.S. in that poll. Beating out the Dallas Arts District, also the Station North Arts District in Baltimore, Maryland, and the Wynwood area in Miami, Florida. Just a couple of things in our University Circle neighborhood, the Cleveland Natural History Museum, the Cleveland Museum of Art, Mocha Cleveland, and the Sculpture Center. Obviously, people are taking notice. Congratulations to the University Circle area. If you haven't made it out there, you better get out there soon because the buzz is apparently big around University Circle. All right, that's it for your 3 News Now update today for Friday, May 7th. I will see you back here on Monday for more 3 News Now. Before that, I'll see you tonight on What's New with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment. Everyone, stay safe, be well, have an incredible weekend, have a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. I hope you're able to celebrate with people that you love, if that's your thing. I'll see you back here on Monday. I'm Stephanie Haney.